Hi everyone, today we will go over a brief tutorial on how to use Google Groups for email communication within your organization or classroom. I teach at Fenwick High School and we use Schoology as a learning management, management system and we do not use Google Classroom. So for this purpose and this tutorial, we'll pr primarily be using Google Groups again for um, teacher to student email or fellow faculty group emails, et cetera. And we use Google Workspaces at our school, like Google Drive and um, Numbers, et cetera, whatever, whatever we need from, from those uh, tools. But again, we don't use Google Classroom. So primarily this will be helpful um, for fellow faculty to just kind of organize their email communications with fellow students and staff. Let's get started. First, you need to in your upper right, select Google Groups here, which is about midway down for me. And we will select it and open it up. OK, you can see that I'm already part of a few groups. Uh, concert Band, Concert Band Parents, Expressive Arts Department, Faculty Teachers Only, Faculty Staff, Student Leaders, list goes on. Each of these groups has specific members in it and specific conversations that are continuously going. Um, primarily, we use it for, again, to email information out to students and parents. But, you know, you could create specific groups here for, you know, small groups within a class for students or really use it for whatever you want to. But I want to start a new music appreciation group, which is a, a one semester class I'll be teaching this fall and spring. But they're separate groups. So in the upper left, I'm going to select create group. I'm going to give it a name. Music Appreciation Fall 2021. And for the group email handle or address, uh, it's still um, it's the exact same as this. You could change it if you want, right? Customize it however you, you prefer. But I am going to keep it the exact same with the dashes just for um, to help me organize it better. And the handle can be two things. Google Groups, which is for a public group. You could still have restrictions on it. Um, as far as, you know, maybe only group members are allowed to view the group. But um, since, you know, most of us work for a school or organization, I want to I want to do this demo with the Fenwick Fryer handle. Um, so it's easier to replicate on your own. So we're going to keep this as Fenwick Friars, which is the organization that I work for. Group description. I'm going to keep it the same as group name, music appreciation, fall 2021. I like Google group there, so so we know exactly what it is. Next. Okay, who can join your group? Um, when I teach this this fall to fellow faculty in like a brief lunch and learn or maybe a, a, a monthly email, I would definitely keep this as anyone in the organization can join. All right, so that means you have to have a Fenwick email to be a part of this. If you don't, um, there's no way you can be invited. All right, but for this um, demo purpose, I'm going to select this to anyone can join because I'm going to use my personal email as the, the other member. So anyone can join. Who can view conversations? Um, I want to keep it as group members only. So if the entire organization would be like anyone at Fenwick, but you must be a group member to view this conversation. So invited and um, approved. Who can post? Group members. So just uh, fellow students and faculty in the group. But, you know, some of the groups, the other groups I just showed you, it's actually selected with group owners. So only group owners can email um, the entire group, which is also probably um, a useful application or option that you might want to use if you just want to keep this uh, group as a way for you to email students and parents. But for this purpose, I want to show you, and um, let's keep it group members to encourage conversation within the group. Who can view members? Group members only. All right. So those are my main um, privacy settings to get started. Hit next. Okay, at this point you can, you if you had like a list of emails or in your context, you could you know literally copy and paste and them all in the group members here. Uh, you can add them later on as well, but to get started, I'm just going to add my one group member, which is myself at andrewsalm at gmail.com. Group managers would be if you had a maybe a fellow um, faculty member co-teaching with you, or if you wanted to bring in another teacher, as a manager to the group, you would add their email here. And then the group owner is just myself, 
which is just my school email. I'm going to have a qu quick welcome message. Welcome students. This is our Google group email at for music appreciation fall 2021. Thanks, Mr. Zell. So any new members will get that welcome email right away. The subscription to the email, um, I would recommend just keeping it each email. These other options are more helpful if you are emailing large groups and doing like monthly subscriptions, maybe for a business or something. But for our purposes, we will keep it at each email. And then this option directly adds members to the group directly. So they will be added immediately once they get the, once I send them an invite. Let's create group. Looks like it's selecting me out of my account. So let's get back into my school account. Go back to Google Groups. And if you look now, look, there's a new group, Music Appreciation Fall 2021. Let's see what's going on. Let's open it up. One second here. There we go. Um, I have my personal Google signed in here and then my school, so it's getting a little confused on which Google I'm using. But when you select conversations, you'll be in the classroom. So at the top, it says Music Appreciation Fall 2021. We have two members, which is myself as the teacher and my own student, which is myself. <laughs> um, on the left here, these are this is our group toolbar. So if you want to navigate between all your groups, you would select that. Um, you can also star group to make it your favorite. Right there. You can also star conversations once we get those started. And if you look in the bottom here, this is these are settings in um, a toolbar directly for this group. So conversations, we don't have one yet, but we will do that in a second. If we go to people, you can see there's two people in this group. Um, I'm getting this disclaimer because it says you may contain an external or non-existent member. This is because, again, I invited myself, um, which is not a Fenwick email. If you just keep this within your organization, you won't have this issue. But for demo purposes, I wanted to proceed with this. All right. So um, that's OK. I'm not concerned about that. But right now you can see our two members of the group. Um, I'm the owner. My one student, which is my personal email, is a member. and. You can select different settings even too, like if you don't want that person to get an email or or maybe you know you don't want them to post anymore or you or you need feel like you need to moderate their posts, you can select these two, but I'm gonna keep those allowed. Um, other options, pending members, banned users, hopefully you don't have to worry about that. But if you do, you have that option. If you go to about down here, um, or I'm sorry, my membership settings. Whoops, I got punched out again. Here's the about um, description, the name of the class, the owner, um, just general privacy um, settings. Entire organization can see the group. Group members can view members. Um, group members can view conversations. Group members can post. Anyone that on their web can join. So you can, again, toggle all these if you want to under my membership settings. Um, Oh, sorry, this my membership setting is just for me. So if I wanted to link this to my Google account, I could do that. Um, this is my email. So this is like, any, you know, any member will be able to, to, to adjust these. So, you know, like if you invite a student, you know, and they really don't want to be a part of the group, I don't know why they wouldn't want to do that, but they could, they could, you know, opt out of emails. Okay, group settings. Okay, here we go. Just in case you want to change anything, you can still change your name, group email group description, you can, from here, you can actually customize your welcome message again. So like, welcome students. And if you wanted to add a, a photo, you could do that. Um, yeah, here, I can search the Fenwick logo. That's not, it's not popping up, but 
you all understand, you all get the idea. You can add a, a customized photo here if you want to. Um, collaborative inbox, I'm going to have that selected so we can, you know, promote collaboration within a classroom. Um, who can see the group? Organizational members. So this means you have to be a member of the of Fenwick, a student or a faculty who can join the group, anyone on the web. This is important right now for the demo purposes, allow external members. So if this is off, like um, I would not even be able, the my personal email would not be able to participate. So I'm gonna keep this on for now, but you might wanna keep this off if you wanna make sure no one from outside the school can get, can be a part of this. Who can view conversations again? We already selected these. Um, membership privacy, um, identification required for new members, either display name or organizational profile. So, you know, that's okay, because you want, again, you probably want to keep it um, a closed group within your school. Um, who can contact group owners? I'm fine with leaving the entire organization, so that means, you know, maybe a fellow faculty or administrator wants to contact me, they obviously can. Who can view member email addresses? Um, I'm gonna keep that down to groups only. And you have some posting policies here. Allow email posting to let members reply from their email client. This allows you know students to reply, which we'll demo in a second. Allow web posting um, also is okay. Conversation history is on. Who can reply to authors, um, group members again. But uh, you also, if you, this is just for, um, yeah, I would actually keep this as group members. So like if you're, as, um, leading class and you send a email out to all your students, you know, people might want to respond to you directly. So yeah, you want to keep that selected. Who can attach files, group members, who can moderate group managers, who can moderate group managers, who can post as a group. Um, so this one, if you want to encourage group conversation, you're going to have to keep that as um, group members who can post as a group. If you don't want students to be able to post on the wall and you just wanted them to only be able to reply to you only, keep it as group owners. So posting as a group, group members though, for right now to encourage conversation. And then um, the default address used by line for messages as a group, author's address. So you know, that I'm okay with that, but you could, if you want it for some reason, keep emails privately, you know, hidden, you could keep it as group addresses. Um, no moderation right now, but you could keep it moderate from all me messages if you want to. Um, no restrictions for new members. Um, you can also select some spam restrictions. Um, so lots of options here. And um, I just want to take the time to go through them because they are important, um, especially if you're leading this for a group of students. And just email language, English, et, et cetera. And there we go. Oh, here's the last thing I want to do. Member moderation, who, who can manage members, just group manager, who can modify custom rules, group managers. Very good. And at last, if you want to delete the group, you can do that down there. So when you're done with all this, you just want to hit save, changes. And now let's get a conversation going. So I'm going to select Start a conversation and say, students, this conversation um, is designed just like a regular email. Welcome students, please watch this music video. I wanna just demo how you can send um, content. Um, so I'm gonna send a brief video of my band, our newest music video, copy the link. The band is called Low Down Brass Band. The song is called Gratitude. Oops, spelled it wrong. Let's fix that. And I'm going to highlight it. Insert link. Copy and paste. And now we have a smart link there. Thanks. And oh, oh, and I will also write, please reply. Please, uh, please comment on the video. <laughs> and 
and then we will post message to the board. And you can see, now we have our first conversation here from myself, the teacher. If you open it, you can see the video, open link in new tab. Didn't want to work for some reason. Nope, oh, there we go. And the students can watch the video. and so on. Um, I want to show you what it would look like for the student. Uh, so I got my private email over here, or personal email, and you can see i am already got a, let's reload it to see if the conversational email, there should be a second email, ah, perfect. So I got two emails here. First one was you've been added to the group. So this is just the first email that you've been added. And then the second email was the first conversation. Welcome students, please watch this video. Vote on brass band gratitude, please comment on the video. So you would encourage your students to probably reply all because then you can see they need to reply all. There's my personal email, but then the group email. So you can say, awesome video, Mr. Zelm. Thanks for sharing. I'm typing too fast. And I'll sign it in Gizmo. Put on exclamation point, and you hit send. At this point, since I have replied all, it should go to the whole group. Let's see here. Let me reload this. When I open up this conversation, and you can see, so in the conversation, there's the first response: "Awesome video, Mr. Zoe. Thanks for sharing." And if you had multiple students, this would obviously be linked um, with many emails. All right, at this point, um, this concludes our opening tutorial on how to get started with Google Groups. Um, from here, you could actually, you know, link calendars, um, create subgroups, etc. But for this purpose, I just want to get folks started because um, as simple as it may seem, I think a lot of faculty would really benefit from using this just for group email, I'm sorry, for classroom communications between um, themselves and their, their students as a group. And I find this works way better than using the contacts on, on the, the Google contacts selection and stuff like that. So I would really encourage uh, using groups even just for basic email, um, group email communications. Thanks everyone.